What's up guys? Hey, it's Sean, I'm back. Uh, we got another video for you with uh, my MV Augusta 800 Dragster RR here. Um, so this time we're going to tackle the chain tensioning. So any of you guys that got European bikes, you know, they're beautiful, they're a thing of art, uh, but some of the complexities that come with that are things like uh, the single-sided swing arm, which MV Augusta has a similar single-sided swing arm on most of their models across the lineup. Um, and with a single-sided swing arm, you don't have uh, the same intricacies of, you know, the, the dual axle motion nuts on a, a twin swing, ar swing arm. So, that said, what we're going to do is we're going to walk through how to tighten it today. You know, my bike came uh, through transit over time, you know, riding, especially when it's new, a new chain is going to stretch. Uh, so you want to check that thing, uh, especially if it's a new chain, you're going to want to check it at a certain interval, a certain frequency. Uh, I would recommend taking a look at it every time you get off the bike, um, at least in the first couple months that you're riding it, uh, if it's a new chain. Uh, that said, um, there's a few tools you're going to need to dive into this. Um, and some of them are specific to uh, the brand or model of motorcycle you have. So um, first you're going to need a torque wrench. Uh, the one I have here is actually a digital, which really comes into handy because um, on this digital model, what you have the ability to do is cycle through functions of units of measure. So, you know, nine times out of ten, you're going to be using inch pounds uh, in the U.S. on items, but uh, as a European bike, what you'll find is a lot of the units, they're in Newton meters. Um, so fortunately for us, uh, we're lucky we've got the uh, torque wrench with a digital readout that makes life so much easier for us. Um, if not, you just got to use a little more elbow grease. You just get onto your Google on your phone and do a unit conversion from uh, either foot pounds or inch pounds, whichever you have uh, in regards to a torque wrench. So this is a half inch drive. It's a bit of, a bit of overkill for what we need to be doing. Um, you, and you'll see the stickers on the bike are really good at identification on the, uh, the amount of torque that you're going to be putting onto these bolts. So there's a sticker right on the swing arm. It tells you this is a 28 to 32 no Newton meter uh, torque spec on these uh, rear bolts that pinch the axle um, once you get it to the proper chain tension. So first tool, you're going to want yourself a torque wrench. Second tool. Um, this is where we get into the brand specific item. So what I've got here is a spanner wrench. The spanner wrench is used typically on a castle nut. Um, it's called a castle nut because if you look at the top of a castle, it's got kind of those uh, little up and down sharp um, square edges. So, you know, as you can see, this will hook onto one of the square edges. This diameter will then hold against the, the outer diameter of the nut and you can turn it. Um, this one specifically, I found it on Amazon. We'll drop that link in. It's right down there. Scroll down if you want to take a look at it. Um, this one I got specifically because, A, it has two ends on it of different diameters. So you see a larger diameter on the top and a smaller diameter on the bottom, depending on which way you're holding it. Maybe it's the top or the bottom this way. But, um, and even more specifically, it's got a built-in bottle opener. So I know where your mind's at. That's where mine is. We'll pop a top once we get this done. Um, so, you're going to need a spanner wrench. Uh, I believe that the nut on this one is somewhere around 120 millimeters. I don't know specifically. Uh, I'll put that as a, uh, a comment in here on the video. Um, but you're going to need this. Like I said, I found this on Amazon. Uh, the delivery was pretty quick on it. Um, it actually comes from a place uh, called DSS. Um, and it's made in the USA, which is, it's always good to rep your brand. So. Um, We'll go ahead and use a, a USA built tool on an Italian bike. So, um, so the third tool you're going to need is uh, obviously a ratchet. I got a half inch drive. Um, you got to be careful because I've got a half inch drive down to a quarter inch drive. Um, so I'm reducing. Uh, the challenge with this is if you have a quarter inch drive, typically uh, this 10 millimeter Allen head is what you're going to use to loosen the top two retention bolts there. So when you loosen those bolts with this, you got to have enough room to get past, if in my case, I still have the factory OEM license plate bracket, which comes off of these same bolts. So it is a little bit obtrusive in there. So you got to have enough room to get past it, 
but yet leave enough room um, that you're not hitting up against the, the rim. Um, and those rims are beautiful. They're a work of art. You know, the wire wheels on the dragster are just, uh, you know, exquisite. So you want to make sure you're not getting into them and damaging something. Uh, and I say that uh, with a bunch of chagrin because that's exactly what happened to me and I'm trying to, to help you curb any kind of issues that uh, I've ran into. So you're going to need a 10 millimeter Allen head socket. Um, in this case, we're using a half inch drive ratchet and we're reducing down from a half inch drive to a quarter inch drive and then we're using a knuckle joint. Uh, primarily because the knuckle joint's shorter than the three inch uh, quarter inch drive um, extension I have and that extension was just too long. You can't get in there and you can't uh, get around. Um, so what I did tell you was it's really easy when you're in there and you're, you're cranking on this thing to get the back end of your ratchet up against the wheel and start scuffing stuff up. Um, I don't want you to have to learn the way I did. Get yourself some painter's tape. Uh, put two or three layers on there. Uh, my, my rim actually felt really soft when it came to the paint. I'm not sure why, uh, but get something on there to protect your wheel from the ratchet damaging something or causing any kind of paint imperfections. You don't want to live that life. Um, so that's the, the third tool that we've got that we're, we're going to need to do this job. Um, now, the fourth and fifth tool I'll talk about in combo. Um, you don't have to have these. Uh, maybe you just want to use a tape measure, uh, but when you look down at the chain on the swing arm, uh, there's a small placard there, and it'll tell you exactly how much gap you should have between, uh, there's a, a, a small little void, uh, which is where you start your measurement, down to you measure down to the center line of the link on the chain. So the center line of the rivets that are going through uh, the links on the chain. It's supposed to be uh, 116 millimeters. Um, nine times out of ten, anything you're picking up is probably going to have centimeters. So there's 10 millimeters in every centimeter. Um, so if it's 116, you're at 11.6. Um, so just watch your measurements there. Uh, you know, this isn't a precision rocket ship, so as long as you're somewhere right real close uh, to 116 plus or minus maybe a millimeter or two, uh, you should be okay. Um, if you get it too tight, the, strain is the chain is just going to stretch a little bit as you go. Um, if you get it too loose, it's going to want to start slapping, uh, and you may even get a little extra wear if it's too loose on your front and rear sprocket. You don't want that either. Um, anyway, so what we did was um, we took a piece of cardboard and a pair of scissors and we measured out 116 millimeters onto a piece of cardboard. And you'll notice that it's not a perfectly square piece of cardboard. We started with a rectangle. Uh, then what we found is if you cut the corner off of that piece, um, which obviously looks a little something like this, you know, you cut that void off of there and what you end up with is kind of this angled piece that gives me a precision measurement of 116 millimeters from this top edge to the bottom. So the reason I did that was because this contour aligns with the contour of the swing arm. So the swing arm kind of radiuses down at the bottom. So you can hold this edge right against that uh, leading indicator mark that's on the swing arm that you measure from. And then this edge right against the chain. And it just gives you a lot easier way. You've got something in there um, to, to hold as a template instead of trying to fiddle around with, you know, pulling the tape measure out or using a ruler and holding it there. Um, oh, and by the way, the fourth thing, which uh, unfortunately I don't have currently, I've got a set on order, they're coming in. We'll talk about those later because I think the ones that I got are real slick. Um, but it's really nice to have a set of paddock stands. Um, if not both front and rear, at least just the rear. A, because it gets the bike vertical. The bike has to be vertical and under at least its own load. Uh, only its own load. Uh, you don't want to be sitting on it. Uh, when you do the, the chain tensioning to the proper spec. So, stand the bike up vertical. Um, in my case, I've got a good buddy here with me. He's going to help me hold the bike up. Uh, the other issue is you need to roll it forward or back or if it's on a paddock stand and the wheel is elevated You can just spin the wheel yourself uh, But you want to roll it front and back and check multiple points on the chain uh, for tension there is uh, Potential for the chain to get you know kinks or imperfections in it um, and show different uh, Tensions at different points in the chain. So you got to roll it forward and back a little bit to make sure uh, that you got the proper measurement across the, uh, the majority of the chain 
Okay, so now we're going to dive in uh, and take a look at the bike, but I'll show you uh, where we're going to be using those tools and how. Uh, then we'll put you on the stand and you'll kind of see the bird's eye view from a distance here. But uh, So we'll start by pointing out where we're going to use these tools. So what you'll see on the rear of the swing arm here, looking from the back towards the front of the bike on the left-hand side, you've got three bolts. There's a 10 millimeter head bolt here. Um, and what you can even see here is the factory torque specs, uh, what they do is they torque the bolts down and then after they're torqued, they put a paint line on them. Uh, and that paint line is one to signify for them that they already torqued it, that way they don't forget. Uh, and you can kind of see it there, the yellow, uh, right there is the, the paint line on the frame. And then there's a little bit over here on the right hand side, but it's I've already uh, broke these loose for video purposes just so you're not waiting on me. But um, So there's one here. And on the opposite side, there is the exact same bolt. It's really hard to get to. You can see it easier through uh, the wheel from the opposite side, but it's it's the same size bolt. Um, there is a third bolt on the bottom you see here. Um, and as you can see, I haven't done a fender eliminator or anything like that. So I still have the OEM spec uh, license plate bracket with uh, turn signals on it. Um, it's a little bit obtrusive for this process, to be honest with you. It gets in the way, it's hard to get the, the ratchet past it, um, and it really makes it cumbersome. But anyway, um, you only have to loosen the top two. Uh, you get those out to basically where they just start to free spin, and that will give you enough gap. You can see that uh, there's a gap in the top of the swing arm right here where those bolts tie in. That will give you enough gap, allowing for you then to put your spanner wrench in there and grab this castle nut. And you see it right here. Um, so that spanner wrench, uh, you can see uh, the castle right there. Yep, you see the square tops on it. And you're just going to take that spanner wrench, uh, slip it down in there. Uh, I'm assuming if you're working on a typical dragster or maybe uh, some of the other models, um, the Bertales, those ones have a little bit uh, lower series tire. This has got that 300 series tire on it. So it actually, the spanner wrench, when you bring it straight out, it's, it's almost rubbing against the sidewall of the tire. So it's pretty close to get in there. You wouldn't want to put a bigger tire on there. You're going to have trouble with tension in the chain. Um, but pretty simple. You put it in there. You would think that righty-tighty clockwise would tension the chain. Um, in this case, that is not true. Uh, clockwise ends up tension, uh, loosening it and counterclockwise um, you know rotating towards the front of the bike is going to end up tightening the chain whereas pushing it down towards the floor towards the rear of the bike is going to end up loosening it a little bit and uh, we'll show you an example of that here in a second so um, now you kind of know what we're going to do um, so uh, yeah and there's a good uh, a good example of that is the torque spec sticker uh, that is on the top of the swing arm. That's the 28 to 32 newton meters. You know, so we're going to try and peg that thing right at 30 newton meters when we tighten these bolts back up. Um, so I've already got these broke loose, but you know, for example purpose, you know, it just went in here like this. Um, try to stay away. The knuckle actually helps keep you away from from the wheel a little bit. Like I said, get that tape on there. Uh, that needs to be the first thing you do. Uh, and there you go. So break those loose. Uh, it was easy to break them loose with a half inch drive socket. I would venture to say you could even get them uh, loose pretty easy with a quarter inch drive. Um, so then when we go to, to torque them back down, we'll use the torque wrench, but we'll tighten them up by hand first uh, with the ratchet and then we'll put the torque wrench on them. But, okay, so you got to stand a bike up vertical. And, uh, you know, just imagine, you know, I've already went in there, I've loosened these top two, uh, like we just described, and, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm going to go both ways for you just to show you how dramatic uh, a little bit of motion of this spanner wrench is uh, on the chain. So, you know, my friend's got it uh, stood up vertical here, but if I push this down, you can quickly see how much that chain, so what uh, starts to sag. Um, and that was maybe you know, a quarter of an inch out here at the far end of the wrench, uh, and it dropped it uh, probably over an inch at that point. So um, what you're going to do is flip that bad boy over. You know, you're going to grab it down at the bottom, try and get a hold of it so you got a low point, um, so you got plenty of room to, to adjust it. 
and then you're just going to pull that thing all the way up till it's pretty tight. Um, and then while uh, the bike is still vertical, take your handy dandy template and you will see right here is that sticker and there's even an arrow that points down to uh, the little tab that uh, kind of protrudes there. Um, you can just butt your uh, template right up against that and as you can see I went way too far you know we're, we're, we're way too tight right now um, but I did that on purpose because it's easier to to turn it clockwise and push it down towards the floor so now I'm just going to ease it back and I, I know I got to go about a quarter of an inch there so now that I got that I'll throw the wrench back on there from the opposite direction um, you know that this swing arm looks like it's powder coated in black. Uh, I don't know how resilient that powder coat is. Usually that's really durable, especially with the wheel being there and rocks and stuff. Um, just be cautious when you put your spanner wrench in there. This one has a real sharp machined edge, which I like because it's good tool quality. But the challenging part is it leaves a sharp edge for you to knock paint off. So just watch it. But All right, so now I got it. I'm pushing down, which is a much easier motion than pulling upwards. I'm going to put my template on there and I'm just going to let her down until I'm about to the middle of the rivet through the link. And you can see um, it kind of depends on how you hold your template, but I'm almost moving it in a uh, radius motion there just to show that, you know, at its low point, it's the middle of that rivet there. So I think we're good right there. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the wrench off because we're going to turn the wheel um, and I'll have my friend move the bike forward maybe about a foot and a half and you notice he pushes it forward he doesn't put any weight on the tail because uh, you just want the bike to be under its own load here uh, throw that back on there and you can see it even tensioned up a little bit it looks like so I'm, I'm going to drop that thing down a little bit more uh, maybe another quarter of an inch. So, throw the wrench back on there carefully. Put my template back on. Let me get a little more leverage, get out towards the end of this tool here. Makes it a little easier. There we go. There, now we're back in it. Take that tool back out, set it down. And go ahead and roll her back about two foot, maybe. There we go. And uh, give her another measure. I don't, we may have came out of frame there a little bit, but you guys get the drill. Yeah, it seems like every time we roll the bike, it wants to tighten up pretty good. So, um, yeah, so it's a little bit tight again. I'm actually going gonna, gonna to bump it down one more time. Uh, and I don't know whether that's a symptom of... Uh, the bike rolling and actually trying to spin the nut a little bit. Um, so what we may end up finding is that you know, as you tighten or loosen this, you may have to uh, actually tighten those, those nuts back up. Oh no, I went too far, I think. Yeah, just a hair too far. So maybe roll her forward another two foot. Yeah, so I don't see that castle nut spinning in there at all as we roll it forward. Um, so I don't think it's tightening as we go. I think it's just, yeah, see that's dead on. Dead nuts right there, man. I think we're good. Okay, so now what you can do is, if you're on a paddock stand, um, good for you. You know, you can lock those bolts down because uh, you don't have to worry about anybody holding it. But I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, flip it to tighten. Uh, I'm going to get in here, I'm going to get at least one of these bolts down to where I know that that hassle nut's not going to slip from where it's at, because I like the position it's in. Um, so I'm going to tighten this up till it starts to get snug. But what you want to note about this is you want these bolts to pull up evenly. So you're going to want to do you know, a couple of turns on the left, snug it up, a couple of turns on the right, snug it up, a couple of turns on the left, and back and forth, just like if you were torquing lug nuts on your car, um, you know, obviously if you torque your lug nuts uh, too hot on one side or too cool on, on the other, um, you can end up doing things like uh, roping, uh, warping rotors, um, things like that. So, you know, same thing here. Uh, this 
mechanism inside of the axle it is what drives uh, your alignment and the centricity of the wheel to the center of the bike. So you want to make sure that, that that wheel is running true. You don't want a tire that's running uh, a little bit out of alignment or you're going to end up wearing treads out. So um, just make sure that you pull those up kind of uh, somewhat pseudo evenly. All right, guys. So we just wrapped up here um, torquing these down. Uh, like I said, 30 newton meters. Uh, fortunately, we got the unit conversions, so we can be pretty lazy with this. But... Uh, the one thing I will say is, especially with the bigger torque wrench and the half inch drive, uh, it's really nice to have that knuckle joint. You want that knuckle joint in there because um, you can almost see I've got it facing vertically to do my torquing, um, but obviously the bolt is on the horizontal. So, um, you know, get in there and get a real good look at it. But that really helped uh, enable me to get these things torqued down. Um, so, and, and obviously the bike's newer, uh, brand new, so we're going to ride it for a while. we still got to break this thing in. Um, so as we do that, I'll just intermittently check these things, just like I would with my lug nuts. You know, I'm going to check them every uh, couple hundred miles after I first do the job. After that, you, you're pretty good to go. They're going to seat, and they're going to be good. Um, but uh, So again, you know, uh, didn't mention the knuckle joint up front, but uh, you're going to want a knuckle joint, I think, when you go to torque these things down. Uh, make sure you get that tape on there. You're going to end up scarring that wheel up. And one last really good tidbit is, especially when you're working around your chain and stuff, get the cleanest, whitest shirt you can find. Because um, when you're in a dirty, greasy area, uh, it's really easy to get something messed up. So just wear the cleanest Sunday best. No, I'm just joking anyway. But, um, so we got her. You know, again, you got you to have it vertical when you get the chain tensioned up there. Uh, but we got her torqued down and I think we're, uh, we're ready to let her rip. I'll see you guys on the streets.